Welcome to Who Won the Week, your weekly dose of sports and advertising. I'm Mike Shields of Nexty Media. And I'm Matt Ulrich, media analyst at EDO, the TV outcomes company. So Matt, we're only a few weeks into this. Let's, let's kind of remind people what we're doing here. This is really the intersection of sports fandom and media nerddom. If you like, if you like breaking down Bill's chargers, but then you also like breaking down ratings and outcomes and attribution modeling and those things like that, this is your show. Yeah, EDO analyzes uh, TV ad impact, so we're going to try to apply what we know about uh, that subject to to live sports, which is you know just very prominent right now, especially with the NFL. Just try to add a few fun ideas, uh, broader themes to the mix. Speaking of elite teams, it's funny because Mahomes is the superstar everyone uh, defaults to. He's been just kind of okay, for at least for Mahomes standards, but they keep winning because their defense – Interesting that they played over in Germany. That was the first time the NFL did that. They've done a bunch of London games. What's your take on the, uh, the ratings numbers that we're supposed to expect for that? And why? I, I wonder why the league keeps doing this because I don't, I don't know if you're ever going to put teams over there. Does it dilute the ratings? Is it just, is it just about selling T-shirts overseas? Like, what was your take on this week and where that, what, what's, what's behind this? Well, the last couple of years, the NFL has been running five games a year internationally. Uh, they've been running the International Series since 2015. This year they ran two games in Germany. Last year it was one game in Germany. The, the staple for these international games is London, where the NFL is still running three games this year. The games are played in the early morning on Sundays, and that is going to dilute the ratings from the perspective of you know the West Coast or Mountain Time Zone of the U.S. tuning in. They're really doing it as an international development play. We know the NBA has made so many strides internationally. The NFL wants to do the same. And so the NFL has been distributing these Sunday morning games via NFL Network, which, again, is a smaller audience. But what a lot of experts expect is that this game on uh, on Sunday between the Chiefs and Dolphins in Germany, in Frankfurt, is going to be the most watched NFL Network game of all time, reaching almost 10 million, according to some uh, estimates on viewership. Yeah, it certainly helps that it was Mahomes versus the versus the Dolphins. Really exciting matchup. Actually, lo, you were, you might have expected a crazy shootout. It was actually a really compelling, tough defensive game. But uh, speaking of, let's talk about ads because we were talking about Sunday Night Football. You've probably seen it. One of the, one of the ads that really stood out is this Mean Girls reunion, which is almost on the level of um, a Super Bowl spot or even, or even higher at some, some points. What, what are you seeing there? What, what kind of things, about, what else has been popping in terms of response there? EDO's headline is, and we measure spikes in search engagement that are attributed to ads. So spikes in Walmart search engagement attributed to that Mean Girls ad. That was the most impactful Walmart ad during the NFL season and really in any of the fall sports this year. It, 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 I think it really... It felt good for a lot of viewers who understood that Mean Girls reference. So the Mean Girls reference, you know, it's the wear pink on Wednesdays. And they played into all of those references to say, on Wednesdays we shop deals. And they have this great offer at the end of this 60-second Mean Girls ad featuring, you know, the original cast, the Lindsay Lohan, Amanda Seyfried, where they're saying beginning November 8th, they're going to have Black Friday deals starting on Walmart, and their headline deal is this skull candy, this barrel speaker that they're offering for $79, and it comes out exclusively three hours early to Walmart Plus members. So it's like a product play, it's a subscription play, and it's, it's a, a reference to a well-loved uh, movie right. and, and cast. And there's also the undercurrent of not only starting Black Friday earlier, but it's sort of them Walmart versus Amazon is in the backdrop here, right? Where, where, where Amazon has its own Prime Days several times a year, and they're going to make they're trying to make a big deal with their Black Friday football game. So Walmart's trying to trying to kind of almost jump ahead of them and generating tons of buzz, and also just trying to try to lengthen the shopping season, which will be interesting to see how the response plays out. Anything else pop? Anything interesting ads wise from the Germany game, or, for, or for anything else from Sunday night? That's really something you're tracking. Well, I want to hit on the Germany game a little more, but I think from the Sunday night game, we saw not just Walmart. We also saw a Best Buy ad. We saw a Dick Sporting Good ad, uh, a couple other retailers. So we see this Amazon contingency, and it's not exclusive to Amazon in terms of retail on Thursday night, 
But then we see NBC on Sunday night where many other retailers are, are trying to uh, take advantage of that reach and impact that they can have via Sunday night football and, you know, averaging almost 20 million viewers uh, every Sunday night in order to to bring in the retail, the you know, the retail season, the holiday season. So I think this Sunday was the beginning of that Black Friday season for NFL advertisers. Yeah, I should I should stop being shocked, but it's like as soon as Halloween is over, it is it is holidays for the next yeah. two months, and then just yeah. it just yeah that's it's almost like a symbolic night of kicking off the season. Anything pop from the Germany game that maybe stood out to you, viewership pattern wise or or advertising wise? Well, we talked about this might break a record for an NFL Network game, which around 10 million. That's over three times the audience size of say an NBA game, where NBA games even in prime time are looking more like two or three million. And we know that advertiser impact, it's really reach times engagement rate from EDO's perspective. That determines the size of the spike that an advertiser gets. And um, I think advertisers were really able to take advantage of a, of a large audience for this Germany game. One of them, an ad I really liked was the Adidas ad with Patrick Mahomes. It was the impossible is nothing, you know, kind of series of Adidas ads. And it, it took advantage of... There's a Chiefs player in the ad being Patrick Mahomes, and then the Germany game where Adidas is a German company. So it felt like this synergy that also delivered a, a, a big impact for Adidas in terms of the, the search engagement spike produced by the ad. Yeah, it's interesting because Mahomes is in so many ads to actually yeah. be able to have, to come across with something different and unique and that it really felt like it was aligned with the programming is a pretty impressive feat to pull off. I think you're discounting the, the magic that's going to happen with the NBA in-season tournament. Don't hold, uh, don't hold your yeah. breath. That, those ratings are going to blow the doors up. If you can understand it, let me know, as I am struggling with that. Matt, I think we're almost out of time here. Where else can people find out for more information? Everyone should head to edo.com. We have a holiday outcomes report that we hope that everyone can take a look at, and we're excited to share more information on edo.com, industry hot takes, the latest in live sports, and more towards the holiday season. Thanks, Matt. This was fun. We'll see you next week. See you, Mike. Thank you.